press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello everyone. In the last session, we had discussed about the basic characteristics, the fundamental characteristics of classification of animals. These fundamental characteristics are necessary for the classification of animals, right? So, what are these fundamental characteristics? What are these basic characteristics? So, we had discussed about the level of organization, right? The level of organization, there were four, like cellular level, tissue level, organ level and organ system level of organization and also the body layers whether the organism is diploblastic or triploblastic. Diploblastic two layers, triploblastic is three layers, body is arranged into three layers, right? And we had discussed about the body cavity which is most important for the classification that is coelom, whether the organism have the coelom or not. If the organism have coelom then they are called as coelomates. If they don't have any body cavity, the coelom, then they are called as acelomates. And if they have coelom with pouches of mesodermal tissue, then they are called as pseudocelomates, the false coelom, right? The pseudocelomates. And also we had discussed about the notochord, whether the organism having the notochord or not. What is notochord here? It is a mesodermally derived rod-like structure which is present in the dorsal side of an organism, right? So here you must remember this, the notochord which is present, right? The notochord, so this character, the presence of notochord, this character will arrive at somewhat multicellular organisms. Uh, the multicellular organisms, when we, when we are classifying the organisms, so in some multicellular, when we reach some higher organisms, higher multicellular organisms, there you will find the notochord. But in the primitive, the lower organisms, you will not find any notochord here. That's why we had a schematic representation of classification, right? So here, the level of body organization, the coelom and the body layers, these three characters are considered from the primitive organisms, from the lower organisms itself. These characters are considered and classified, whereas the notochord, it is present only in the higher organisms or else the advanced, somewhat advanced organisms, okay? So, for that sake, for this, based on these characters, based on this fundamental character, we had discussed a schematic representation of classification, right? So, in the schematic representation, the animals and there the organisms are grouped, the animals are grouped into two. One is presence of notochord and another one is absence of notochord. If the animal doesn't have the notochord, then they are the lower organisms like Porifera, Cylentrata, Flatihelminthes, Nematoda, Annelida, uh, Annelida Arthropoda, Mollusca and Echinodermis, Echinodermis, right? So these are uh, the lower organisms whereas the notochord is present in somewhat like I said advanced organisms. So these will belong to the phylum chordata. So these are lower phylums like from the Porifera to the Echinodermata, these are lower phylums, okay? Phylum Porifera, Cylentrata all these are but the phylum chordata in the phylum chordata the animals which belong to that group have the notochord okay again the phylum chordata is divided into sub phylum that is one is protochordata and another one is vertebrata again vertebrata is divided right so here vertebrata means the in this group the organisms which are present they have the vertebral column that means the notochord is replaced by a cartilaginous or bony vertebral column right and the vertebrata so this character and this character the animal which have this character they belong to the vertebrata further vertebrata is again subgrouped and this 
a subgroup is based on presence or absence of jaw okay the organisms which lack the jaw which are jawless they belongs to the class cyclostomata okay they belong to the class cyclostomata whereas the organisms which have the jaw which bear the jaw there again five classes are belonged so it is divided into two one is cyclostomata and another with five classes what are these five classes they are the pisces okay pisces and uh, amphibians reptiles apes and mammals again in this uh, five classes some are aquatic some are terrestrial some need the water source for reproduction and some lay the eggs outside the water right and also some organisms they give birth to the young one like mammals the class mammals right so they give birth to the young one so we had discussed about this the basic characters and also the schema schematic representation of classification by using this basic characters how we classify the organisms right so today let us discuss this one by one phylum so starting from the poriferans to the mammals okay let us discuss the characters of each phylum one by one okay so starting from the porifera so porifera these are the characters these are the general characters okay in the phylum porifera so if you further classify the organisms into class order family genus and species and if you are if you want to study the genus as well as the species if you want to study the organism at species level then the characteristics will be more specified okay the specified or special characters will study but when you are studying the phylum okay when you are studying the phylum the organisms which belong to this phylum okay the organisms which belong to this phylum have all these general characters but when you are classifying into the categories further categories like order genus and species the characters will be more specified so here these are the general characters okay let us study this characters one by one here the poriferans they are organisms with holes commonly known as sponges so here you must note this the organisms with holes pori pores porifera okay the organisms with holes and they are called as sponges so what are these sponges so you know it irala maneli you sponge know it irala so you play and you also clean with that sponge right so they have pores on their uh, you will find some pores on the sponges so likewise this poriferans they also have pores all over the body that is the holes all over the body and they look like the sponges okay for that sake they are called as sponges the poriferans they are called as sponges okay and they are primitive yes they are very lower organisms in the animal kingdom they are the lower the initial organisms and they are primitive multicellular animals of course they are multicellular from the fungi all the organisms from the fungi from the kingdom fungi the plants as well as the animals all the organisms are multicellular right and also with cellular level of organization okay so here the porifera they have cellular level of organization so here cellular level of organization as i said before these organisms which exhibit this level this cellular level have loose cell aggregates that means cells are not compact compactly arranged the cells are loosely arranged so here loose cell aggregations will be present in the cellular level organisms which exhibit the cellular level of organization that's why these poriferans they look like sponges they have pores okay so for that sake the organisms are under cellular level of organization and here these poriferans they are non motile okay they are non motile and attached to some 
solid support so here non motile means they will not move right as you can see the plants they will not move they will attach to the substratum they will attach to the ground or soil right so here the poriferans they will be attached to the substratum okay they will be attached so here attached to some solid surface usually these poriferans are aquatic mostly marine some are fresh water but mostly marine they will be present in the sea or ocean right marine these organisms the poriferans they will be in the underwater so in the underwater usually you will find some rocks or else uh, stones any solid material which is present this poriferans they will attach to that material for the support okay they need support for that say they will attach to the solid substances okay and here they are non motile you must know this they are non motile means they will not move they will be in a one place okay and they have holes or poles all over the body this lead to a canal system as i said before these organisms they have holes on the body okay and this will lead to the canal system what do you mean by this so if you see this diagram right if you see this diagram sorry so here there are some pores so it is the porifera porifera organisms so you can see the pores pores all over its body right so these pores are called as porocytes okay and here these pores they will uh, they will lead to the canal system that means the transport system so what does the transport what do you mean by that here it will transport the water along with the water the uh, the necessary gases like dissolved oxygen as well as the food will enter through the water okay so here it will leads to the canal system the pores will lead to the canal system and canal system is responsible for the transportation of dissolved oxygen as well as the food through water okay and how this canal system is that is the pores they will open up into the central cavity called spongocele so you can see the pores all over here right so this will open up into the spongocele so here inside this porifera there will be a cavity okay inside this there will be a cavity called as spongocele so this all pores they will together open up into the cavity okay that is spongocele later when the water enters to the pore here it will take the dissolved oxygen along with the food and it will enter and inside it will enter to the spongocele and later from the spongocele the water it is it is flowed out okay from the spongocele from where the water it goes out through the osculum okay so here the water it will move out through the osculum so these are osculums okay and while exiting while the water is going out it will it will take up the nitrogenous wastes so the nitrogenous wastes which is produced in its body so it is taken out through the osculum okay the entry point is the porocytes water will enter through the porocyte and water will exit through the osculum and inside the poriferans so they have the spongocele the central cavity okay so here these are the characters and the animals these animals are covered with a hard outer layer or exoskeleton the skeleton that is exoskeleton made up of spongin fibers okay so the spongin fibers so these animals they are very primitive they are very lower organism they doesn't have any modified or advanced structures so these animals they need some structural support as well as mechanical support right for that sake these sponges have a exoskeleton or a outer layer made up of spongin fibers so this spongin fibers it will give somewhat mechanical strength as well as it will make up the structure of the organism 
okay and here these are the examples like eplectella eplectella in the eplectella you can see the osculum right the osculums and inside the osculum can you uh, you can observe the spongocele and also the pores all over its body right so in this organism in this picture you will get the idea of osculum and the spongocele and pores right so this organism is euplectella this is one of the example of porifera next the cycon okay the cycon it is also one of the example and the spongilla so if you see this organism in this image so it will look exactly like the sponge like how we used to play and clean right that sponge so it will look exactly like the sponge so the name spongilla okay so these are the three examples of porifera euplectella cycon and spongilla so here these organisms the poriferans they are usually so have the cellular level of organization they are aquatic some are freshwater and some are marine okay and here they have a canal system these pores will open up to the canal system through which the water will enter and the water will carry the dissolved oxygen as well as the food and this poriferans they have outer layer or else the exoskeleton made up of sponge and fibers okay so these are the examples further moving on to the next phyla that is cilentrata okay so here the cilentrata the phylum cilentrata is the second one so the first one is porifera and next is the cilentrata so here these organisms they are aquatic mostly marine okay aquatic they will be present in water marine either sea or ocean the salty water which is present in the sea or ocean they will be present mostly in marine and sessile or free living some are sessile here sessile means like they are attached to the substratum they will not move they will be immobile okay they will not move they will be attached to the substratum like how poriferans were attached to the substratum like that this organism some of them are sessile and some are free swimming so here free swimming means they will not attach to any substratum and these organisms they will move in the habitat they will move around their habitat okay and the next one is the body is diplomatic diploblastic sorry the body is diploblastic and exhibit tissue level of organization so these organisms are diploblastic i said in the previous session about the diploblastic here the diploblastic means the cells are arranged into two layers one is ectoderm and another one is mesoderm sorry endoderm ectoderm the outer ectoderm and the inner endoderm the layers are only two types ectoderm and endoderm they are called as the diploblastic organisms and exhibit tissue level of organization right so here tissue level of organization the cells which perform the same function are grouped into tissue and tissue will perform the function later right so that is the tissue level of organization so here as you see in the poriferans they were cellular level of organization whereas the cilentrate the next phylum so they have the tissue level of organization so here somewhat uh, development will takes place here the organisms from one phylum to the next phylum so here some are modified some have variations and here somewhat development of the individuals organisms will takes place so that is evolution right so here they exhibit tissue level of organization and further so some species they live in colonies and other are solitary so here live in colonies means the organisms they live in groups okay so these organisms they will live in groups and some are solitary that means they prefer to live alone like 
they will be free swimming and they will be alone okay so here you must understand that the organisms which are present in colonies and also sessile the organisms which are sessile and present in colonies have no freedom okay like for example corals so the corals they will be present in the colonies they may be with the spe same species the same species will be grouped as a colony or else there may be different different species okay they will be grouped so here the colonies uh, corals is the example for the species which live in colonies whereas solitary for example hydra they are free swimming okay so you must note that the hydra which is free swimming and also solitary have all the freedom to live the life whereas corals don't have okay so this was some logic right but this is not necessary you must not say that the corals they live in colony and also they are sessile whereas the hydra they are solitary okay and here some of the species are free free swimming and some are not okay now there are some more examples of celentrata like uralia okay uralia the moon jellyfish so this is a jellyfish uralia and also the sea anemone okay the sea anemone so this is the sea anemone and this is the uralia jellyfish moon jellyfish and this is the sea anemone can you see they are different from one another right so corals hydra uralia and sea anemone so these are the examples of celentrata okay so this was the characters the general characters of phylum celentrata so they are the tissue level they are with the tissue level of organization and body is diploma diploblastic some live in colonies and some are solitary some are sessile and some are free living okay next moving on to the next phylum that is platyhelminthes okay and these are the general characters of phylum platyhelminthes so this fatty element is they have dorso ventrally flattened body hence are called as flat worms so here dorso ventrally means okay the body dorso ventrally flattened like this, like dorsally and ventrally compressed dorso ventrally flattened body so for that check they are called as flat worms flat worms okay and they are bilaterally symmetrical right they are bilaterally symmetrical here bilaterally symmetrical i said in the previous session that the organisms if you cut the organisms in one plane okay if you cut the organisms in one plane so you will have two identical halves right to the two parts which are present they are identical to one another so that is bilaterally symmetrical right so this platyhelminthes so when you cut the organisms in certain one plane so it will have two identical halves so they are bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic okay the cylindrates they were diploblastic they are diploblastic sorry and here this platyhelminthes they are triploblastic so what do you mean by triploblastic the organisms they have ectoderm the outer ectoderm the middle mesoderm and the inner endoderm so they are the triploblastic organisms right and these organisms the platyhelminthes they are acelomate so acelomates means the body doesn't have any cavity so the body is covered by ectoderm and the middle mesoderm and endoderm they doesn't have any body cavity they are acelomate okay and with organ level of organization so here though they have organ level of organization the organs are not well developed okay the organs are very basic they are not well developed and they exhibit the organ level of organization so here poriferans they were only the cellular level right and the cylindrate 
the tissue level of organization so here organ level of organization so if you study each phyla so you'll find somewhat advanced character from the previous one if you compare the previous phyla to the next phyla there will be some characters which are modified and which are advanced okay so here the platyhelminthes they exhibit organ level of organization so here organ level of organization means the tissues which are present the tissues they will group up and they will form a particular organ and this organ will perform a function okay that is organ level of organization and they are either free living or parasitic and if they are parasitic then they are usually endoparasite endoparasite means what well, first basic what do you mean by parasite the parasite means the organisms which depend on other organisms for food and shelter right so for the food as well as for their living so they will depend on other organisms so here these parasites in case if the platyhelminthes are parasites they are endoparasites that, that means they will be present inside the body of another organism okay so that is endoparasite endoparasitism okay so they are either free living free living okay they will not depend on any other organisms they will survive on its own they are free living or parasitic if they are parasitic then they are endoparasite okay so these are some of the example of platyhelminthes one is planaria okay so you can see this planaria if you cut this planaria in one plane so you will find two identical halves okay so for that say they are uh, bilaterally symmetrical and also if you see the liver fluke if you cut the liver fluke in one plane so you will get two identical halves again bilaterally symmetrical and this planaria is well known for its regeneration okay regeneration means if you cut this planaria okay if you cut this planaria and this planaria the piece which is present in this planaria the cut piece it will develop into a new individual so that is regeneration and re planaria na cut madidre okay and the piece which is present it will develop its organs or its structure so and this is the regeneration hosa individual age generate agutte okay so it ha it is known for its regeneration the planaria and the liver fluke okay and tapeworm right this tapeworm it is usually endoparasite it is present in the uh, stomach or intestine of animals and also in human okay and it will uh, grow in meters long okay this tapeworm it is present inside the intestine of animals as well as the humans okay the tapeworm so these are the examples one is planaria liver fluke and tapeworm so these are the examples of platyhelminthes so here the platyhelminthes they are some are uh, ecto uh, some are endoparasite they are parasite and some are free living they are bilaterally symmetrical acylomate organisms okay they are usually or else they are commonly called as flat worms because of their dorso ventrally flattened body okay so next moving on to the next phylum that is phylum nematoda okay the phylum nematoda and here this organism's body is usually circular okay the body is circular so hence the name round worms so platyhelminthes their body was dorso ventrally flattened for that's why they are called as flat worms whereas here the nematodes the body is circular so they are called as round worms right so you have to remember the common name flat worms the platyhelminthes the round worms the nematodes okay and these animals they may be free living 
aquatic and terrestrial or parasitic so parasitic in animals as well as in plants okay so they are free living some are free living and some are aquatic some will live in water and some are terrestrial or parasitic in case pa in case they are parasitic then they are present in animals and plants okay so the nematodes further the next character is these nematodes they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic and pseudo coelomate animals so bilaterally symmetrical so when you cut the organisms in a certain plane it will be the two identical halves the bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic body have three layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm the middle mesoderm and they are pseudo coelomates right so flatulhelminthes they were a coelomates the coelom was not the coelom is not present in the flatulhelminthes but here in the nematode the coelom is present but it is a false coelom that means the mesodermal tissue the mesodermal cells which are present they are arranged in the pouches and these pouches are scattered in the cavity and they are called as pseudo coelom and the organisms are pseudo coelomate animals okay so these nematode they exhibit pseudo coelomate in nature okay further they are tissues there are tissues but not real organs so here the nematodes of course they are they are advanced than the coelenterates okay so here they have tissue the body have the tissues but these tissues are not the real organs the organs are present but are not well developed okay the actual organ it is not formed and it is not well developed okay so it will be somewhat in the undeveloped condition the tissues okay it will not form a real organ okay so these are there are tissues but not the real organs okay and here some worms are disease causing yes from the flatulhelminthes so if you study the flatulhelminthes as well as the nematoda so here these organisms they will cause some disease for humans or else any animals okay so here which are this disease causing organisms let us see so one is uchelaria uchelaria okay so this is the organism uchelaria and it will cause elephantiasis okay so the elephantiasis so what is this elephantiasis so what happens the uchar area okay this uchar area it is carried by the mosquito here mosquito is the vector so this mosquito when it's when it bite to a certain person certain healthy person this uchar area it will enter to the person's body okay inside the body this parasite it will infect the lymphatic system okay lymphatic it will infect the lymphatic system and it will results in the swelling of legs as well as hands okay so swelling of legs as well as hands so for that sake the name elephantiasis okay that means either the legs or the hands they are bigger compared to the normal leg okay so compared to the normal leg the legs are bigger so for that sake the name elephantiasis okay so this elephantiasis is caused by the parasite called as uchararia usually the species is brancofti uchararia brancofti okay genus uchararia and species brancofti so the elephantiasis further another example of disease causing parasite is ascaris so you can see the picture of ascaris right so this is female and this is male so here female is somewhat bigger compared to the male the body is somewhat bigger compared to the male body okay and this 
uh, ascaris if you observe these are called as round worms as i said before nematodes are called as round worms the body is circular you can see the body is circular in nature right so you can notice here the body is circular and the body doesn't contain any segmentation sorry the body contains doesn't contain any segmentation okay the body is plain okay the body is plain the body is running right so the round worms right so here this ascaris it will cause the disease ascariasis the disease ascariasis so what is this ascariasis whenever you eat a unhygienic food okay an Un unhygienic food which is not clean right when you consume the food or water the eggs of this ascaris will enter in inside the body and inside the body the eggs will hatch into the adult individual and this adult individual it will further develop and it will cause the infection in the stomach or else the liver right so that is ascariasis it is caused by the parasite called ascaris and the genus is ascaris and species is lumbricoid ascaris lumbricoids okay so these are two examples of nematoda one is ucheraria and another one is ascaris okay so in your exam if it is asked that what does the disease caused by ucheraria then it is elephantiasis and the disease caused by ascaris is ascariasis okay so this was some of the general characters of nematoda right the body is circular aquatic some are aquatic terrestrial free swimming and some are parasitic in nature the body is bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic and they are pseudocoelomates and they have tissues but no real organs and some are disease causing organisms okay so this was about the today's class today we had discussed about four phylums phylum porifera cilentrata platyhelminthes and nematoda in the next class let us discuss the other phylums okay thank you